Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Sam from Taiwan. Welcome to Asian Epic TBI course. In this section, we, we are more focused on the pre-hospital management of the pediatric TBI patient. We have three learning objects. The first one is a recognized pediatric hypertension. And second, um, uh, how to to learn how to management of the pediatric TBI patient. And sir, uh, we will learn about the how fast when management, management of the pediatric ventilation. Uh, this content from AEMS and also Arizona Epic TBI program. Uh, for faculty, I don't have any disclosure. Like the adult patient, pediatric TBI patient also focus on the preventing H-bomb. H-bomb can kill the patient, including hypoxia, hypotension, and hypertension, hyperventilation. So we have to prevent this H-bomb. Of course, some numbers were different by age. How do we how do we deliver a child's life brain? If we want to save the children's life brain, we have to do these three key actions. The first one is to do forcing to do, and second second part is the check five uh, important thing every five minutes, and last uh, record five things in every five minutes. The first portion is the four things to do. You can uh, remember it as the loser because if you don't if you uh, don't do this four important thing you will lose the patient and then you will be the loser right the O is stand for the oxygenation S is stand for the systolic blood pressure E stand for the antidote CO2 R stand for the don't hyperventilation. The oxygen, we have to keep saturation over the 90% and give oxygen, oxygen immediately. In SBP, we have to keep SBP, especially uh, in adult patient, usually we have to keep SBP over the 90 millimercury. Antidal CO2, we have to keep antidal CO2 around the 40 millimercury. Don't hyperventilation. We keep, we have to keep adequate ventilation. Of course, it depends on age. The first part, oxygenation. As mentioned before, uh, we have to keep SpO2 over the 90%. And if patient have the loss of conscious or unconsciousness patient, we have to give er early give the high flow oxygenation to prevent patient hypoxia. Usually we use the non-rebreathing mask. In pediatric patient, don't forget, simple airway maneuver is very important and effective for the hypoxia. Second, systolic blood pressure. Minimal systolic blood pressure were different in different age. Like the, in the infant, the minimal uh, systolic blood pressure is 70 millimercury. <coughs> in the <coughs> children, <coughs> Uh, it, it will be the 80 millimercury and adolescent or adult it require the minimal required uh, 90 millimercury or you can use this equation for the the ground flow of blood pressure Seven, <coughs> 70 plus ag time 2 is the ground flow of the blood pressure and don't forget uh, Unless the terminal stage of the traumatic brain injury, TBI usually didn't cause the hypertension. So if you patient have the hypertension, don't forget search the cause of shock, especially for the hemorrhage shock. And if patient have the hypertension, you can give the <clears throat> 20 milli per kilogram and, uh, and can uh, repeat every after uh, every five minutes to maintain the minimal requirement of the sensory blood pressure. <coughs> In pediatric shock patient, 
sometimes it's, it is very hard to get a, the IV access. Don't hesitate the IO access if necessary. So when we need the IO, <clears throat> there's a three criteria. One, hypotension or other sign of shock. Second, peripheral IV access cannot be quickly established. Third, patient's mental status is such that they can tolerate the procedure without the undue pain. So if you meet these three criteria, don't hesitate to do the IO assess. Third, it uh, talk about the anti dose CO2. It should be uh, keep the 40 mini mercury. We do a lot of things like this video. This video from the Arizona CPR University. We very frequently do the hyperventilation. But as you know, hyperventilation can kill the patient. It's very bad, bad, bad. It can uh, increase in the six times mortality of the TBI patient. So don't do the hyperventilation. It is very important. In the <coughs> what is the adequate rate of the PD, PD, uh, ventilation of a pediatric patient? It depends on different age. I can give you some illustration. Uh, you can image what tools is used for for during it uh what tools is used during eating in different age usually less than two years old they usually use their hand in young children young young child they usually use the fork right in teenage usually they use the chopstick in asia so you can time five uh, you can uh, five time this equipment and you can get the rate like the <coughs> infant, you have to 25 <coughs> ventilation per minute. In <coughs> child, 20, 20 ventilation per minute. And adult, uh, adolescent or adult, you need the 10 ventilation per minute. So in the other hand, in, uh, in the other words, you can give one ventilation every 2.4 seconds in infant and three seconds in child, and six seconds in adult. Don't forget, don't hyperventilation the patient. So, how to give the ventilation every 2.4 seconds, right? You need the guidance like this one. This is also from the CPR University. They have the light every six seconds. And of course, you can, <coughs> you can set it up about the every 2.4 seconds. Or you can use like this one. This is a monitor. You can see that. There's a two, one ventilation. Two, one ventilation. It's set on the 2.4 seconds. So you can use this advanced equipment to help you guidance your ventilation rate. And second part is talk about the <coughs> the to check five things every five minutes. The, these five things are including check vital signs, check saturation SpO2 and anti CO2, and Glasgow Coma Scale, especially for the motor. And don't forget, you have to watch out the ventilation EMT because it is really easy to hyperventilate the patient. Talk about the Glasgow Coma Scale. It's some different from the adult in with the children. <clears throat> the eyes of eye open is more is usually the same, but <coughs> in verbal response, five is usually mean the cools or bubbles. Four is is stand for the irritable crying. Three is crying cries to pain. Two is moan to pain, and one is none. In motor response. The five is a withdrawals from touch. Four is a withdrawals to pain. And at the and other three to one is a uh, is the same as the adult. And last part is five things to document every five minutes. 
So we have to document five things. First one is vital sign, Glasgow coma scale, a special motor, and fluid given, and force, oxygenation, and also the entitled CO2. And last is a pupil. In modern technology, some motor can provide on time recording of the vital sign and other very important uh, very important number given to us. Like the, this Zoe X, they, it have the TBI dashboard, so you can check every uh, vital sign or entitled CO2 and saturation. Yes, and you just check the Glasgow comma scale and also the pupil. When we need to pay attention about the herniation, the first one is the Glasgow coma scale less than nine, and rapid distortion. The Glasgow coma scale rapid distortion over the two. Second, when when you so see the anisocoria, and sir, if you see the patient have the motor response to two point, you have to be aware of the uh, herniation. But it usually mean it is very rare in the pre-hospital setting. Most children with severe TBI are not hurting anything. And if it, it present, it usually means the bad prognosis. So it's very important to do the uh, regular thing, don't do the rare thing, right? In summary, we have to prevent secondary injury of the TBI. Avoid the H bomb is is very very important. It's also important in the pediatric TBI patients. Hypoxia, hypotension, and hyperventilation. We can stop it. Let us let our patient more safely. Thank you.